Welcome to another edition of The Word on Woodward. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside Art Regner. And joining us today, one of the newest faces to the Red Wings roster, center Andrew Kopp. Andrew, we are so excited to chat with you today. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll get right into it. Now you're from Ann Arbor, you went to the University of Michigan, and you are officially a Detroit Red Wing. Describe some of the emotions that came with this next step in your career. Um, I mean, definitely a lot of excitement uh, to be able to, to play in Detroit is, um, you know, something you dream about as a kid and, uh, you know, something that's kind of been put on the back burner for a little while now, just based on, you know, playing in Winnipeg and then going to New York. But I um, knew there was going to be an opportunity this summer to, to potentially come home and um, just ended up being the right fit for me, uh, you know, hockey wise and, you know, personal life wise. So uh, excited to get everything going. Uh, a lot of moving parts at the moment, just in terms of, uh, you know, living and, you know, moving and all that kind of stuff. Even though I'm in Ann Arbor, I don't think we're going to stay here. So, um, yeah, lots of moving parts and um, lots of stuff to figure out, but a lot of excitement for sure. Andrew, you're a good Michigan lad, good Ann Arbor native. You wear the maize and blue proud, and uh, you're an excellent hockey player from Michigan. You go to Winnipeg, their main color is blue. You go to Broadway, <laughs> their main color is blue. And now you have to wear red. Is it going to be tough to put on a garment that is basically all red? I, I don't think it'll be tough, but it's definitely been a little bit of an adjustment. I don't think I've ever worn red as a primary color before. And, um, you know, maybe a little bit with USA, just the red, white, and blue kind of ends up meshing together a little bit. But, uh, no, it'll be it'll be a little weird at first, but uh, looking forward to getting the, the, the Wings gear on and, um, yeah, being a part of something special. So, uh, you know, growing up in Ann Arbor, you don't dream of wearing red unless it's Detroit. So I'm glad it worked out. All right. Well, you knew you weren't going to get out of this interview without talking about your high school football career. Oh, what, colors, what colors did you wear in high school? Uh, we were like uh, kind of North Carolina, like baby blue and navy uh, were, were, the, were the colors. Blue. More blue. Yeah, All a lot right. of blue. Lots of blue in your life. Lots of blue in your life. But OK, football question for you. So I read that the reason you started playing football was because your dad thought you needed to grow physically and be more physical on the ice for some hockey scouts. Is that true, number one? And number two, how did it turn into this amazing high school quarterback career? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that's definitely true. That was exactly why. And um, luckily, he was kind of the, he was the coach of my hockey team. So I was able to do both and maybe miss a little bit here and there to, to be at the other sports. So uh, I was really fortunate in that aspect. And then, um, I don't know, I feel like, uh, you know, I always kind of threw the ball around in the yard and at, uh, you know, in middle school and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden just kind of um, ended up being a quarterback somehow. And then the physicality part really went out the window. I uh, wasn't exactly running people over at quarterback. So, um, yeah, it was interesting how it all worked out, but I think uh, it really all worked out for the better. And I think, you know, playing hockey and being a part of such a fast paced game really helped with hockey and, um, you know, able to read the play and whatnot or help with football, sorry, and was able to help read the play and um, just function, have a, a, you know, a brain functioning at a really fast pace. Okay, so you were the first senior class at Skyline High School. You were part of that. Yeah, correct. Now, let me ask you about your quarterbacking career. Do you still hold most of the quarterbacking records for Skyline High School? Has there ever been anybody who matched what you were able to accomplish on the gridiron? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, I think the yardage and the touchdowns and the interceptions are all still mine. So luckily I have all three. Um, so we know that you bring some skill to this Red Wings roster. We, we all understand what you're gonna bring to this lineup in that aspect, but you also bring some experience, right? So in 2017, 2018, you were with the Jets when they made their run to the Western Conference Final. And then in New York, you were there for just last season's Eastern Conference Final run. What did you learn? Excuse me, what did you learn from those experiences? And what do you think it can help you bring to a Red Wings team that's trying to get to that point? I'd say first, you know, there's, there's no real shortcuts. Um, it's, it's just a lot of hard work and a lot of coming together as a team and everyone pulling in the same direction. 
Um, but by that token of no shortcuts, it, it can also happen very quickly. Um, I think you saw from both those teams that we were out of the playoffs the year before. And the next, the next thing you know, with a, with a young group, they take the next step and they're in the conference final. So um, not to say it's going to be us, but not to say that won't be us either. I think uh, there's a lot of potential with, with the group that we have and the, the guys that we brought in all have, you know, a lot of experience in winning cups, uh, you know, between Mata and Peron. And um, so I, I, I think, and then myself and Sherrod going deep into playoffs as well. And um, yeah, I, I think... You know, we'll be able to add a lot of that experience, a little bit of that knowledge, but I don't think we want to come in as, as kind of know-it-alls. That we've been, we've been the ones that uh, you know that have been there. I think we're trying to kind of come in humble and uh, you know prove ourselves from the get-go, and then I think you know the leadership aspect will will start to come out organically over time. My my question to you is is that I've always liked Winnipeg because when I looked at the roster, at one time I see Jacob Truba, I see Andrew Cop, I see Kyle Connor. And Connor Hollebuck, who did not go to Michigan but is from here, how easy was it to have guys from relatively the same area that you grew up all on the same team trying to make an adjustment playing in the wilds of Canada? Yeah, I mean, for I think especially in the beginning, for J like me and Jacob uh, played together since we were 10, um, which was, you know, a really nice, familiar face to walk into the first time going into an NHL room. You kind of have a guy to – that uh, you know you're you feel comfortable with, feel secure with. Um, so that was a real positive for me. And then, yeah, it's been nice having Casey and, and Hellebuck there, just you know skating together in the summer. You know, you know each other's plans, know each other pretty well. And um, yeah, I lived with Kyle his first year in Winnipeg, so I think it was nice for him to kind of have a familiar face, um, the same way I had Jacob. So um, yeah, it was it was a great experience in Winnipeg. Um, you know, a lot of good times, but definitely ready for this next chapter. Well, in this next chapter, you will have another fellow Michigan man in Dylan Larkin, who is the captain of the Red Wings right now. And I know that you talked about your relationship with him when you were addressing the Detroit media for the first time as a Red Wing. Just dive a little deeper into that. What is your relationship like with Dylan Larkin, aside from just being teammates now? Yeah, I mean, I think we've, you know, we've stayed in touch uh, pretty well over the past, you know, six or seven years, obviously with him being in Detroit, um, you know, didn't get to see him as much during the during the season, but um, he's a guy I love being around in the summertime, uh, you know, a lot of good skates uh, with, with the group that we have here in, uh, in Plymouth, and um, yeah, super competitive guy, I think he really pushes himself, he pushes others, um, you know, loves to have fun, loves to be around the guys. Um, just, you know, a, a great guy to have around, great guy to have as a captain. So, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be a blast playing with him. And I think, um, you know, we're kind of looking forward to, you know, furthering our relationship even more and having that trust and, um, you know, ability to bounce things off each other. As I said before, is, you know, me being his captain in Michigan, we had some, you know, good conversations when he was a freshman just about, you know, things that, you know, we can do better as a team, things that, you know, he can work on, I can work on. So I think, uh, you know, to kind of continue that relationship will be will be really fun over these next five years. When you were uh, exploring the free agent market and deciding what you wanted to do, how much of an impact did Dylan Larkin have on your decision to come to Detroit? Um, I mean, to be honest, just a little bit. Um, you know, having that familiarity and, um, you know, someone I felt like was going to be, you know, a good captain and good player, um, you know, for the Wings during the time that, uh, you know, I was willing to sign for or that I was allowed to sign for, I guess, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, it, there's just so, there's so many things to think about, you know, it's, it's, it's a five-year decision. It's not necessarily next year or the year after. And um, there's, there's so many moving parts and so many things within your own, within your own life, within your own family's life that, uh, that kind of take precedent a little bit. Um, so uh, knowing he was here was definitely, a, you know, another pro to the Detroit side, but um, it definitely is an interesting process, but one that, uh, you know, a lot of things are, are being weighed. So, uh, but like I said, I think it ended up in a, in a great spot in the end and looking forward to being with him on a daily basis. I know when Steve Eiserman calls you and says, hey, I'm interested, I'd like you to come here. You know, he knows that, you know, you're from here, so there might be a built-in thing. But so... I'm sure that that's kind of flattering. You know, when when Steve says hello to me, which is about every other year, 
I, 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 I light up, you know? Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so with that said, um, you always want to know who your coach is. The Red Wings coaching situation was finally settled uh, about a week or so before the draft, which was, was about two weeks before free agency. When you're looking at Detroit, do you look at Derek Lalone? Do you study him? Does he call you and talk to you? Because obviously this is the guy that's going to be behind the bench for all 82 games. Do you, Have you tried to build up a relationship with him? Uh, how much did you know about him? And have you, as I said, as a good Michigan man, kind of done some research on him and figured out uh, – what kind of coach he's going to be. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, early in the process, I was doing my homework and kind of talking to guys that I knew that, you know, played with him in Tampa or knew of guys that played for him at Denver. And so um, heard, you know, nothing but good things. And then um, when New York kind of said, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to sign you, we were able to get permission to talk to other teams. And um, he's a guy that I was able to be on the phone with for about an hour and, uh, really felt like we thought about the game the same way. Loved the way he thinks about, you know, not just like the the game itself, but practices and um, you know the way he plans on you know treating treating us as players and as a team and the direction he wants to go and some of the ins and outs of his systems and whatnot. So really felt like we were on the same page with with a lot of things and felt like um, you know he was going to be a, a voice that I would be comfortable playing for and and, and love playing for honestly and. Um, someone that I think is is gonna and honestly like me as a player as well. You know, you, you want to know where you fit and where a coach is gonna like you, and um, you know where you're gonna be a good fit. You know, on and off the ice. And I felt like in my conversation with him, I really enjoyed that time and um, felt like it's gonna be a good relationship as we build it as we build it along here. Have you talked about what your role will be on this team the upcoming season? No, it hasn't been exact like that. I think. Um, you know, talking with some of the, the coaches and, and Steve, uh, you know, they see me uh, as a certain type of player. And, um, they, you know, I think they have things that they really like about my game that where that gets where that gets applied is, is going to be up to them and up to me to, to show I can handle any any sort of role or situation. So, um, no, I haven't been, in, you know, it's not like I was promised, you know, X, Y, and Z. It's it's very much, you know, we like the things you do and we'll, we'll see where it takes us. So. I'm um, looking forward to, to kind of building that um, and kind of proving myself, um, you know, from day one, which I feel like I've had to do my entire career and I'm um, looking forward to continuing that. Well, you know, what's interesting about, you know, you definitely have evolved as a player. I think that's mm -hmm. that's fair to say. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you really take a situation, you analyze it, and then, bam, you do whatever needs to be done, not only to help your team, but to improve your game. With all that said, what I'm really kind of curious about, because there have now been, I don't know, Daniela, what are we up to? About 7,500 uh, speculations of what the Red Wings line combinations are going to be. Oh, yeah. uh, but, <laughs> but, but, they look, but they look at you, as Daniela said, a second line center between David Perron, which I think is a great, great signing, and Jacob Verona, which was a really good trade for Detroit. Do you allow yourself to think of those possibilities or are you just focused on what I need to do? A little bit of both. I mean, I think right from the, from the get go, part of the free agency is figuring out where you think you're going to fit. And, um, and I think you start to think about, you know, the different combinations and, you know, you know, power plays and penalty kill and situational in terms of matchups or, you know, who the, who are the D you're going to be out there with a lot of the time. So, um, that's just part of the homework I think you have to do during free agency. But with that said, now it's now it's time for me to, to be the best player I can be in September and October and throughout the year. So, um, you know, I, I think in the beginning you think about that a little bit more, and especially after I signed, I, I didn't know David Perron was going to be coming in. And then, you know, you had a player of that caliber that's, you know, super exciting, especially with the prospect of playing with him or, or Kubalik as well. So, um you start to, you know, you kind of think about it a little bit, but um, at this point, it's just, you know, it's a new staff, it's a new team. You kind of don't really know exactly, um, you know, your whole your whole fit. So you're just kind of concentrated on, you know, how to, you know, how to be as ready as possible for for September. Have your game in the right place. Have your body in the right place. Have your mentals in the right place. So there's there's so many things to think about, and 
Um, you know, most of them are just kind of pertain to, to how I can be the best version of myself. Having good special teams in hockey is essential. We know that. Unfortunately, the Red Wings have struggled that way um, for what seems like an eternity right now. Um, I am curious because you play, you can play all three forward positions. You can kill penalties. You can go on the power play. What is the main ingredient for success to have good special teams? I know it's kind of a loaded question, but you are, I think you have it kind of figured out. I think you really think about these things and you try to apply, apply it. How can these special teams start to ascend up the ranks in the NHL? I mean, the first thing is good players. Um, at the end of the day, you can have the best plan ever, uh, but if you don't right. have good players to 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 complement that plan, then uh, you, you're going to struggle for a bit. And then, otherwise, it's it's having a really good plan, and then inside that plan is is room for for your good players to make good plays. So whether that's the power play or the penalty kill, you got to have the right plan. You got to have the right reads. Um, but by that same token, you don't want the players being robots out there and you want them, their anticipation, their hockey IQ, all that to come out and, uh, and and make the plays that are that are there. And that's, you know, why a lot of us are in the NHL is the ability to make that extra play. And when, you know, it might not be on the scouting report or uh, something that, you know, is in the pre-scout, it's something that just kind of gets ad-libbed in the middle of the game and, and then it works. So um, good players, good plan. And then from there, just allowing the, the creativity to come out and, you know, even on the penalty kill, same time, you know, you feel like there's an opportunity to pressure when, um, you know, it might not be necessarily exact to the system. Uh, but if you see an opportunity to jump and you jump and, you know, everyone kind of jumps off that and then you kind of create a turnover and ice it down. So, um, like I said, good plan, but ability to, to be yourselves inside the plan. And you've talked about it just a little bit, but every – player that comes to Detroit that is from here, right? You you think about the nostalgia of it because you were a Red Wings fan growing up. And then, of course, you know the history of the Red Wings organization. So that makes it a very desirable place to be. But what's exciting about this team right now, in your mind, the team that you're coming into? I think it's the, the, the fact that they're trending, um, you know, in the right direction. I see it as a lot of the same type of path that, um, you know, Winnipeg took. Uh, you know, in my first couple of years, I was one of those young players. And, and New York has taken the past couple of years and now go to a conference final. So I think you see a lot of cornerstone pieces on the team. Uh, I think you see some guys that have been here for, for a while, like Larks, like Bert, um, and, you know, and Fabs too, I think that have been around for a little while and um, are ready for that next step and ready to, um, to be playing important games down the stretch. So that was part of what really enticed me to coming here. You know, you, you think about all the nostalgia of playing as a kid, but it's got to be the right fit. And I'm just lucky enough that it was the right fit for me and, um, you know, being able to be a part of a team that's, you know, ready to take off. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. And I just had to say one thing. When you guys were talking about, you know, taking 20 years to finish your, your degrees from Michigan, <laughs> I, I may have went to Michigan State, right? But it only took me four years. So that has to count. Well, that's because one year at Michigan State <laughs> is like – it's well, easy. It's like, it, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak for Andrew on this too, Daniela. Oh, it would have no, taken us like a year and a half to get a four-year degree from State. I mean, that's the difference of caliber of student. One year at Michigan is like four at Michigan State. <laughs> without question, without question, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. We would have had by if, if we would have if we would have been four years at State, we both would have had doctorate degrees in medicine or something. It would be Dr. Yeah. Cobb and Dr. Regner. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so, but I, I, hey, I love it. Up this one. I did. Hey, I somebody has that. to go to Michigan state, right? So, you know, good for you. Good for you, Daniela. And you know, <laughs> Andrew, I don't know if you're a member yet, but I am looking forward to the day that you're inducted into the skyline hall of fame for athletes. It's going to be a great day for you. I'm looking forward to it too. <laughs> well, Andrew, thank you so much. It was a great conversation, and we're all really excited to have you here in Detroit. All right. Thank thanks, you. guys. Appreciate it. And a big thank you to all of you for tuning in to another edition of The Word on Woodward. We'll see you next time.